Hello everyone. Today Neha and I will be talking about our research on the effects of COVID-19 on the US economy. As you know, the whole world has been going through a very scary pandemic. Death rates have increased exponentially in front of our eyes. Many countries have taken unprecedented measures to combat this pandemic. Economic consequences of the mitigation measures have also been unprecedented. Let me show you one example about what is happening to the economy. The following graph shows the unemployment rate between 1948 and 2019. You see that it increases during recessions. In the 1982 recession, it reached a point as high as 10.8%. In the Great Recession of 2007 and 2009, it peaked at 9.9% in October. But if I add the recent data to this graph, you will see how different the unemployment rate in April of 2020 is. It now reached 14.7%. In fact, the unemployment rate is expected to increase. There are estimates that suggest that 53 million people might be unemployed by the end of the second quarter in 2020. Remember that the, the labor force in the U.S. is about 165 million people. That it means almost one-third of them may be out of work by the next quarter. This has never been seen before in the U.S. So why is this happening? Well, in many ways, this is not a regular recession. Economic activity has halted due to the shelter-at-home orders that are designed to stop the spread of the virus. But now we have to think about how to open up this economy. There are many proposals. Many of these proposals involve large-scale testing, contact tracing, isolating those who test positive, and allowing individuals with anti antibodies to go back to work. There are likely to be many challenges in these options, such as the accuracy of the tests or the political challenges facing these options. Privacy laws, for example, may prevent making results of such tests publicly available. Neha and I have a proposal. In fact, there are several other economists who are coming up with similar proposals. This involves targeted lockdown policies. Let's imagine the following exercise. Suppose that the current stay-at-home policies result in 50 million people to be unemployed. Is there a way to choose who these 50 million people should be so that we would be minimizing the economic consequences of this stay-at-home orders. We might also be decreasing the fatality rate that um, we will observe in the economy by doing so. So we know that older adults and those with underlying medical conditions seem especially vulnerable to the COVID-19 pandemic. For example, the fatality rate of 60 to 69-year-olds is 14 times higher than the fatality rate of 40 to 49-year-olds. How about a stay-home policy based on age and pre-existing health conditions? Can we calculate the economic consequences of such a policy? Can we think of ways to implement such a policy? Well. To answer these questions, Nea and I have built an economic model and analyzed the consequences of targeted lockdowns. So the way we did it is um, a very common way in economics these days. We created a virtual economy that looks like the U.S. economy. It has the same number of people, same distribution of education, same health status, same income distribution and same labor force behavior as in the U.S. economy. And then we shocked this economy with a totally unexpected health shock in 2020. So that shock, which is um, the COVID-19 shock, 
infected a lot of people in our model economy. It increased the death rate among the infected. And the results in fatalities are different by, by different ages. So in the model economy, the government responds to this pandemic by ordering many businesses to shut down. And we examine what happens to this economy in, a, in this virtual setup by using a computer model that mimics the US economy. So that's what Neha and I am doing at the moment. Our results are very preliminary, and Neha is going to tell you all about these results. Thank you, Aisha. Hello, everyone. I'm Neha Bairolia, an assistant professor at the USC Marshall School of Business. As Aisha mentioned, thanks to the amazing progress in computer technology and the wide availability of survey data sets over the last few decades, we can now analyze policy measures by simulating their effects in a hypothetical economy of interest. Now, this is a powerful tool as it allows one to evaluate different policies and find the best one amongst them without having to actually implement them all. So in our work, we built a computer model which is meant to closely mimic salient features of the US economy so that we can analyze different stay-at-home policy options in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. So what do we find? Well, we learned two important things from our computer simulations. Lesson one, we learned that in terms of the macroeconomy, we can do much better than a stay-at-home order which affects all individuals in the economy alike. What do I mean by that? Well, imagine a scenario where the stay-at-home order only applied to the elderly. Such a policy makes sense from the public health perspective as the COVID-19 virus is 30 to 40 times more likely to be fatal for the elderly population as compared to those who are in their 20s or 30s. Moreover, in terms of the economy, we find that such a targeted stay-home policy results in a much smaller decline in the aggregate output than the mass quarantine case where all are affected by the order alike. To be more specific, in our simulations, GDP declines only by a little over 2% in the targeted case and by a much larger 9% in the untargeted scenario. Why is this the case? Well, it is because our model mimics a very important feature of the US labor force, which is a majority of the elderly are retired and receive social security benefits. So keeping them at home does not hurt economic output as much. We also explore the implications of a health-based stay-at-home order. An important feature of COVID-19 is that it affects those with certain pre-existing conditions like asthma, liver disease, cancer, or those who are immunocompromised with a much higher intensity than those without these conditions. In fact, wide-scale testing has revealed that a large proportion of population without any health complications may actually be asymptomatic to the virus. From the macroeconomic standpoint, we find that in our simulations, implementing a stay-at-home order based on health conditions would result in a drop in GDP by 5.5%, which is still lower than the economic contraction expected under the current order. Remember that the model economy we built is designed to capture the distribution of income and health in the US. So the differences in the income levels of people with different pre-existing conditions allow us to capture the impact of health-based policies that leads to this result. So to summarize, the first lesson from our experiments is that targeted stay-at-home policies are far more effective at mitigating the economic fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic. Lesson two. So to reiterate, a first lesson indicated 
that stay-at-home orders based on age or health conditions are far more efficient than the one which affects everyone alike. While implementing such a policy in practice, however, we have to be cognizant of privacy issues. Specifically, the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, introduced in 1996, puts certain restrictions on the access to individual medical records by public or private parties. One possible way to navigate this issue is for the government to incentivize individuals who are willing to share their health information and self-isolate. So then the question is, how much would this cost the government? In other words, if the government wanted to compensate everyone at high risk of COVID-19 complications, what should the payoff be? We find in our simulations that the compensation that would make individuals with pre-existing conditions be willing to self-isolate varies quite a bit. For instance, imagine two individuals with the same health complications, but one of whom is the CEO of a multi-million dollar firm while the other makes minimum wage. You may easily guess that the payouts would be very different and that it would take a lot more to convince the CEO. We find that depending on the assumptions we make about how much individuals value the extra time at home, it can cost the government anywhere between 140 to $500 billion to convince everyone with pre-existing conditions to self-isolate. While this may seem like a large number, the government is already spending over $2 trillion in form of the CARES package. Our simulations show once again, however, that it makes much more public health and economic sense to implement more focused stay-at-home measures. So to summarize, through our experiments on the simulated economy, which resembles the U.S. economy pretty closely, Aisha and I find that targeted lockdown policies are far more efficient. We also find that such targeted lockdown policies can be practical and can in fact be implemented through appropriate compensations to the targeted population. Even under the most extreme assumptions, a targeted policy would cost the government four times lesser than what it is spending currently on pandemic relief. Thanks for listening. Stay safe.